those revenues that they were getting from people tuning in to Sky Sports, having a Sky Sports subscription, were suddenly maybe lost. Nah, I haven't tried to bend it, I've just left it. She goes, oh, just try and bend it for me. So I've got stitches in at this point, laying there. She's going, come on, keep going, keep going. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Next minute, the stitches just burst. And the people look at you and go, oh, you've got this, you've got that. Mate, you know how hard it was? I could have just quit at that point. I say, ask a question. If you don't understand something, ask a question. And there's nothing like a stupid question because mm-hmm. you're learning something. I had good people give me good advice. My instinct and my body, I always go with how my body feels. Anything's possible when you're happy. Right. And we're live. Yes. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another epic conversation. I'm your host, Coach Gerald Lammy. Um, today, I'm joined by another special guest, someone who's played over 600 games in the National League. Not to be played around with. That's a serious, serious accomplish- accomplishment. If if anyone knows about football, it's not easy to get those numbers. So um, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of knowledge from him today. Um, speaking about his experiences throughout football, um, without further ado, I would like to introduce Jabo I- I- Ibere. Sorry about Jabo Ibere. <laughs> Didn't mean to butcher it, but welcome, Jabo. Thanks for coming on the podcast, bro. Appreciate it. Brilliant. Thanks for having me on. Look forward to getting into it. 100 percent man no no do you know what since we had that conversation on the phone i was like yeah i need to get this guy on the on on the podcast man because your energy just over the phone i was like yeah we need to we need to get something going because um again the the reason why for anyone that's tuned in before the only reason why i started this podcast was to kind of show people the different walks in life whether it will be playing in the premier league we've had premier league players on the podcast we've had managers we've had um, people in the media industry, people that have played Sunday League, people that are just all walks of life and, and speaking about their journey because if someone can resonate from that and use your experience as motivation, then that's our job done. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's all, that's what I'm about, just sharing knowledge, um, you know, giving people that hope because I've been in that position, you know, I've been in a position where, you know, all the odds are against you and you have to try and make things out of nothing, basically. So... Yep. You know, you need motivation around you. So, yeah, speaking to you, bro, I was like, no, nah, we need to we need to definitely get something going, man, um, on, on the show. So, again, thanks for coming on, bro. Um, yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what I want to start off with right now? Obviously, the whole chat going on, you know, when this comes out, there's probably going to be more news that's going to come out around it. But this mm. whole Super League chat that everyone's talking about, you know, mm. the, the conversation has been going on for, for, for a long time. But it seems mm. now this is serious stuff that the big boys mm. um, are looking to part ways in terms of the European competition. I've heard mm. reports that, you know, they still want to be part, of course, you know, domestic leagues. However, there's reports, obviously, from the Premier League saying that... Um, if this does go ahead, then they can jeopardize their position in the domestic leagues, which for me, I can't see that happening because there's a lot of money in, in stake, you know, for the Premier League to lose if these top six teams do get diminished from the league. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to I want to speak to you in terms of from a from a from a point of view of someone who's played in the national league, you know, playing from the from the lower end of the the pyramid. How and what will this do to these? you know, clubs in League One, League Two, even a National League, you know, what what effect will this have on them, you know, going forward? Because for the big boys, obviously, it's money for them. It's going to, it makes sense for them. But how do you see that money trickling down the football pyramid? Well, I mean, yeah, for, obviously for the big boys, it's, it's, it's a real business, isn't it? And, and money is, it's all about money for them. But I think, how it, I think, how it probably affects like lower league teams, etc. I mean, they get money from the TV rights, so a certain percent, I think. Don't quote me, but I think some of the revenue that's gained from the Premier Leagues and and um, screening of matches is mm-hmm. then divided through the pyramids down the league. So obviously, if those guys obviously shoot off and join their own thing, those revenues that they were getting from people tuning in to Sky Sports, having a Sky Sports subscription, was suddenly maybe lost. So therefore, clubs rely on because those lower league clubs mainly rely on like um, gate receipts and things like that. A handout from I think the Football League give money, the Premier League give money. Now, if that money is suddenly split in half, or or the Premier League money isn't there, especially now what's just happened with COVID, mm. boy, people 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 will be looking to be get, will be going bust. 
Um, and, I, and I don't, and I don't think it's like football is the the found the foundation of football is from the root. It's from mm-hmm. the streets. It's from you know, it's from the heart. It's not a game built on you know. It's all about money. It's about regular people, normal people that just open the door, go to the park with a ball and play football. It's never been about right ball money. Yeah. Let, let, let's just get about. It. So it seems to be turning that way. It's gone into a business. It's getting like big CEOs from corporate companies taking over big football clubs. You know, generating money, generating publicity, and it's just changing now. And this move is uh, is a um. A prime example of what's going on, and which mm-hmm. would be a shame. I think if it was to ever happen, um, it would change a lot of football, English football, and definitely I think lower league teams will, will, will suffer because they generally they rely on some of that money. Mm. And 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 for me, bro, it's like the timing of it as well is a bit mad. Like especially with the whole you know circumstance the world is in at the moment, to mm. to announce this now where you know mm. things are all over the place is, is a bit I don't know like you know maybe they're thinking people can't gather more than six so there won't be no protests if you do go out yeah. there then you know what I mean so I don't know I don't know it's a, it's a bit of a mad time to kind of announce that news mm. now out of you know all the time so it's I mean it's something that's to be fair like I wouldn't be surprised if they block it they block it they block it but eventually something will transpire something will like They'll form something because this this is not this is not the first time it's come up. So mm-hmm. you know somewhere it's in the pipeline. They want to do this and just thinking about ways they'll get around it. And when mm-hmm. there's a lot of money involved, people then find ways to make these things happen. So I wouldn't be surprised five, six, seven years, whatever, there'll be a new league of some sort. That's mm-hmm. for sure because they mm-hmm. don't. But it's just it's just silly. And we've we've had football now for hundred like hundred years plus some clubs been in existence for nothing like this has ever happened mm-hmm. you know so why now you know yeah. why why change and especially in the circumstances we're in where clubs literally are just just about staying afloat and it was if, if it wasn't for the premier league bailout to league one league two clubs they, they'll be they'll be folding mm. they have no fans and that's mm. where they get most of their game receipts from so then to just put this out there saying boy you know we've helped you now but we want to fly off is the time and the time and it's a bit unethical and it's a bit and it's a bit lame and mm. um it just goes against it just you can just see the direction where football's going it is literally it's 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 money it's literally a real real business where investors want to come in and just really make that mm. that top money now and maybe because of the crisis what's happened top clubs maybe lost money 100 percent reap that, reap that money back and this is an idea of how they can do it you know boy so, 3.5 billion boys it's, it's it's hard to kind of turn that yeah. down do you know what i mean especially in times like this especially when you've got players like harlan now apparently there's reports saying that he's going to be the first one million per week player like, officially because obviously there's probably you know ronaldo yeah, Messi. Yeah, you don't know yeah. how much they're getting yeah, but yeah, yeah. i mean officially from football apparently they're saying that harlan so how are these clubs are how do they sustain that model for years and I, I watched something about Wenger he said 10 years ago he said about this you know where you know clubs won't be able to to be running no. with the amount of money that's coming in in terms of players asking wages etc so yes it's a it's a crazy time but um it's gonna get I, crazy there's, there's always like ma- many years ago there was an ITV digital deal mm. and it they, all this money came in all this TV was on and more games were being shown then it busted and then all the leagues, I think some clubs, like this, this is why some clubs end up going into administration, mm-hmm. getting deducted points. They were just spending way too much money than what they had, relying mm-hmm. on this ITV digital money. They all went bust and then clubs were in crisis. And even some clubs now are still dealing with the repercussions of that many years ago. And this could be a similar thing. You start playing players. I don't get it wrong. I think players deserve whatever money they get. They deserve it. They're not the mm-hmm. ones that are just trying to do their thing. If someone wants to pay me, and then, and then I think it's the, it's the same for anyone else out there. Someone wants to pay you to do a job. You're not going to turn around and say, "Where? The million pounds? Where do I keep it? You're going to take the money, isn't it? So of course. I don't get when people have a go. It, it's not their fault. They're doing yeah. their stuff. They've worked hard with their skills. Someone wants to pay them the money. So be it. But it just doesn't seem sustainable. And eventually, mm. I think there will be some crisis. There'll be a bust. And it's like a cycle. And you'll start again. Wages will mm. just go down. A million, a million pound 
Um, but then again, it's like baseball even. I feel like some teams out there or NBA, they, yeah. they're on serious wages as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious wages. Just, but then I guess there ain't so many teams where it's mm. like, and so many players, whereas football is a lot of teams, there's a lot of, there's a bigger squad. Mm-hmm. So to be paying that sort of money, well, I'd be, I'd be intrigued to see if they can keep it up for a, a, a period of time, you know? Do you like you obviously as a as a player you you've been in the inside like you've seen how you know things run in a behind the scenes and that like to where you are now do you enjoy watching football anymore like do you feel it's become like very commercial? I mean, even even when I was a player, mate, I I, I didn't really watch football. I mean, I liked I prefer to watch like say highlights of a game, mm. like Champions League matches. But I wouldn't just sit at home. I mean, I play football, I train every day, play football. So the last thing I sometimes want to do is sit back and watch football on the TV. That was yeah. that was a myth for me. What I enjoyed doing was studying players in my position. Yeah. So I studied yeah. the arts of strikers, their movements. So I watched like clips. I get clips sent to me from the, uh, the video analysis guy. Mm-hmm. I watch YouTube. I watch goal score things like that rather than sit and just watch a match. Mm-hmm. Not not interested. But it's getting a bit like America. Yeah. In terms of you go watch NBA um, or, or um, there's very so many adverti- advertisements, there's mm-hmm. loads of stuff going on. And with American owners, like with the um, Manchester United team, you can see maybe the influence is starting to yeah. maybe slowly grow. Um, don't get it wrong, I'm down for a bit of entertainment. Why not? I went to, when I was in the States some time ago, I watched like a San Antonio Spurs. Okay. Entertainment was brilliant. It was yeah. all, 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 so I don't mind that, but you can definitely see football players are just not players anymore. Mm-hmm. They're almost like um, gimmicks. They're almost like, you know, you, you, they seem to be better for what they do on the outside of football rather mm-hmm. than them being how good they are on the pitch. You always yeah, wait a yeah. player more what they're doing on social media, their character, what they're trying to endorse than the actual football ability. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's all beginning to kind of change. You're not like a just a player anymore. You're celebrity, almost a you brand. Know. Yeah, brand. You're celebrity. So then they can, they can probably do acting now. They probably can do yeah. probably like do rap videos or whatever. They can probably sing now because the the status, the following can open other doors and other avenues sort of mm. thing. Whereas you go back to when I first started playing or Roy Keane days, no chance. Yeah. No play, players. It'll be, it'll be like having you up in the dressing yeah, yeah. room. Right, you're singing, get yeah. it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a different world. And I think even clubs might even sign players literally because of their following, because mm-hmm. of who they are, rather than that he's a half-decent player, but boy, he's got a following or yeah, he's this, yeah. brings this, he's got, he's, he, he dresses well, things like mm-hmm. that. And what's interesting is, um, it was a bit different, but when I was watching, I was watching this, um, I think it's Drive to Survive, F1 series. Oh, yeah, 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 on Netflix, yeah? Yeah, brilliant, okay, brilliant show. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't, I was never sort of knew much about F1, but what's interesting is that when they appoint players, um, I mean, drivers, yeah. they ain't just about the skill as a mm-hmm. driver, it's about the whole package, mm-hmm. the following, how they look, how they can get sponsors. Things mm-hmm. like that, and I think football players are now are almost going that way. A lot of good, a lot of football players are top players. They're they're good looking guys. They yeah. they dress well. They've they've got a, a, a something about them that mm. you know the club thinks that will help sell shirts yeah, more yeah. so. You know, and I think there's a there's definitely more of a commercial aspect these days than just being good at football sort of thing. Hundred you know? percent, man. I think I think the the time of the Galacticos, which um Florentin mm-hmm. Perez is. He's he's apparently heading all this uh, European Super League and mm. he's the first one to kind of start that whole Galactical stuff mm. with mm. Beckham, Ronaldo, and Zidane yeah. bringing them all together and the attention mm. that it brought to them. But yeah, no, I agree with you, bro. It's it's definitely changing. Um, I'm I'm all up for change. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm all up yeah. for change. You have mm. to evolve with the times. Yeah. But mm. in terms of breaking away and kind of making a format where there's no promotion, no relegation, like that yeah. to me is just. It's just an exhibition match, really and truly. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's pre-season. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. nothing into it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's crazy. But, um, bro, let's 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 jump into a little bit um about your career. You know, um, I read a, I read an article about you in terms of you had a freakish injury that you could have mm. nearly lost your leg. Mm. Like, how? What? What was that like? And you know, 
you know, what, what was you going through mentally as well during that time? And, and, and how did it all go about, man? How did that all start? Well, I mean, funny enough, it was um, last my last action as a professional football player. And at least I've done it scoring, doing what I love, which was scoring a goal. And kid. as I've as I've gone to score, the keeper's dived and he's and he's dived and his like mouth has sort of gone into my knee. Mm. So at the time, I just felt like I felt impact, but it wasn't. I didn't really think much of it. I just thought I had like a, a nasty gash, mm-hmm. which I just at the time I just thought oh, I was just going to be stitches, clean up, it, it'd be fine, just a cut. Um, so then I, I, I walked away like that, thinking, yeah, yeah, whatever, mm-hmm. like, go see the doctor, stitched up, washed it, etc. And it's only once I got home, um, I was in, I was in like a heaps of pain, and I was a bit like, well, no, it's, it was only like a, um, a cut, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why am I feeling this? And the, the antibiotics I was given because it was a human like bite wound, they had to have antibiotics, and the ones they gave me. When I was taking them, I thought that was what was making me a bit sick. I didn't okay. think I was doing so I thought I sort of wrapped mm-hmm. into the medicine. So then I took, I took two um, that the one that evening and then went to bed. And when I and then I was just feeling ropey and then I felt like oh, I felt like sick. Next morning, my lip, my knee was huge, massive, like mm-hmm. a, like a, like a bowling ball. I was like, Rah! like what have I done here? Like you know, um, I thought it was just like a gash. So I rang the physio, I told him. My knees f. Um, I need game ready machine. These any crutches. I can't even move, and I feel like I'm gonna faint. I feel sick. Mm. Um. So then I was told to come to training on Thursday. Blah blah blah. I've come to training, and I, I was just pale. I was really ill. I was in pain. I've never felt pain like this, and I'm tough, and I've had like injuries or whatever. But this was ridiculous. Mm. And so then I was due to have an MRI scan, but because of the pain I was in, they were like, oh, you know what? Let's just send you to hospital. Let's try and get some good, better pain relief or something. So when I arrived there, um, the lady could see I was in bother and trouble. And trouble. So she, she, she just said, already straight away, looked at me and said, yeah, it looks like you're infected there. Mm. And then I said, oh, really? She said, yeah, yeah, it looked like something's going on. It was really hot and everything. So I then um, had an um, X-ray. And then in the x-ray, they saw two, at the time, they called it floating bones. Wow. So I was like, oh, man, what have I done? I'm thinking, like, shattered something in my mm. knee, etc. Then I've gone in to see the doctor in, in triage, and then they hadn't seen the x-ray at this point, and I've just gone in straight from there. I'm laying there, and she's gone, um, oh, it's, just, it's just really slow, isn't it? I said, yeah, yeah, it's all hot. And she said, are you, are you able to put weight on it? I said, no, 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 I can't put no weight on it. It's just mm. like, can you, can you bend it? I was like... Nah, I haven't tried to bend it. I've just left it. She goes, oh, just try and bend it for me. So I've got stitches in at this point. I'm trying to bend it, lay in there. She's going, come on, keep going, keep going. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Next minute, the stitches just burst. And all Ooh. this just came out. But the relief of the tension, I was like, oh, it was so good. Mm. And then all of a sudden, she's going, oh, so when did this happen? I said, oh, this happened on Tuesday. And, this, and by this day, it was Thursday. So, uh, so you play the game, and yep, yep. Um, and you clashed with, with someone, went, yep. And his mouth went into your um, knee, went, yeah. Okay. Did you, and what, how was the keeper? Did he, did he lose his teeth? Well, I said, well, he was crying. I think he lost his, like, his teeth for that. She goes, oh, so did you, you didn't come hospital? I went, nah. You didn't have no x ray, no tetanus? Went, no, no, nothing. Just see the doctor and he stitched up. No one, did anyone check for teeth? I went, no. She looked at the other doctor like, hmm. Mm. Lie down, lie down. She just got some tweezers, having a little little dig about. She just gone, oh my gosh, she just pulled out a tooth. Because there's a tooth there. Well, out of your knee, bro? Out my knee, man, out my knee. She just pulled it out. I was like, nah. there's two in there because that must have been the floating bone that we do on the x-ray there's a floating mm. bone i said that that must be teeth but then the x-ray, she's called in got the x-ray and then yep 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 she goes well i can't reach for the second one because the, the room's not sterile blah 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 but you're gonna have to have an operation have to clean it we can see that the impact there's impact and there's shearing to your patella tendon as well 
and you can have a bone infection because the, of the, the bacteria, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Next minute, I was staying overnight. Um, next day, I was operated on quickly, took the teeth out, washed it, repaired my, my patella tendon, which had ruptured. Um, and they were like, boy, if you're lucky you came in when you did, because if you come in Saturday, we might be looking at a different story bus, you know? And I was just li- sitting there, and because I'm quite chill with it, so I didn't really understand the gravity of the situation until mm. like some time after, and so I just sat there thinking, but, and what was interesting, when I was just laying there, wrote, like, after operation, a few days after, I was just sitting there, just going, oh, why me, and blah, blah, mm. this and that. Then I'm in pain, it's really sore, but there's some guy opposite me, no leg, legs just been taken off, innit? So I just went, yeah, cool, innit? <laughs> You're yeah, not yeah, that yeah. guy. So yeah. count yourself, like, as much as I'm going through what I'm going through, so I looked at the guy and said, that, that could have easily been you, thank God. So mm. that gave me some perspective. Um, and I just kind of just got through it. But man, it was, the pain was a madness. Even when I'm talking about it now, thinking back to, like, trying to shower, trying to move around, mm. it, 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 was, it was a joke. It was an absolute joke. And then I'm slightly, I was slightly rage, raging with the... Um, and everything at my club because you know yeah. standard things that you just think should be common sense if you're in that if you're in that world if that's your role mm. certain things you do certain things you ask for you know it's like um i don't know you, you go to the garage and they um do your service and you go oh yeah do you put oil in my car it's that standard you just know certain things you you ask or do as yeah. procedures and I'm just glad, like, I'm here to tell the story, but, man, it was, it was, and I haven't been able to, like, run properly in almost, two, it'd be two years in October. So that's why I kind of got into a bit of cycling. Mm-hmm. Um, I was braced up, was on, I was on intravenous antibiotics for two months, every single wow. day. So let the nurse would come around my house and, and give me, give me the antibiotics and just knock you out. Give that's it to crazy, like, bro. So it's an experience, but because of the way I am, I'm always positive, I'm always sort of like you know. But it's, it, it, it was it was it, it was a tough. It was tough in terms of just suddenly you're an active person and you mm-hmm. can't do nothing, can't do anything at all. Um, even the lightest things, because I had this in my arm and stuff, couldn't do anything. Um, but yeah, man, it was it was it was interesting. But it just makes you for future, just ask always ask questions, even mm. when so-called people are in charge ask, everyone's human you know they don't don't get don't get fixated because they're a lawyer because they're a doctor if they know it's just ask questions make sure stuff is done mm-hmm. because like i said i might not be here today telling telling the story and if it weren't for my body reacting from the way it did i might have just been chilling thinking i'm getting better mm-hmm. not knowing that i'm getting septic sore in my body and my legs coming off oh you know nice. what I mean? That's uh, crazy, it's though, a man. Bad, freaky injury, like you know. Um, that's that's unheard of, though, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know it's, what I'm saying? It's, it's madness, absolute madness, you know. And and, and did you retire before? That? Did you retire no, after no, that? I retired for that. Oh, because yeah. of that. Okay. Yeah, of that. Yeah. And how old was you then? I was 30, 36 at the time, I think. Okay. Yeah, I was thirty six, and um, I would have. I was that still going well, and then what was funny is that my that season had a great preseason. I always had a good preseason. I always worked hard, but I was mm. real good shape. I was on it, and and that and that happened, you know, because it can't to be played another couple of seasons and played till I was forty, like mm. be a legend of the game, you know what mm. I mean? And unfortunately, it just didn't get better. And um, do you ask yourself, bro, sometimes like why, like why? Because like you said, I could have carried on. I could have gone until 40. You sit down sometimes and say, why? Like, why did that happen to me? Because, again, that is that. not normal, that injury. That's no. never heard of. Well, I never, I'm never, i never one to say, like, things happen, innit? And things happen, I think, for everyone. And I just say things happen for a purpose. Never say things happen for a reason. I use the word purpose, you know? What is, okay. you know? Um, and I won't sit there and say why because you know you won't have the answers i won't understand but the purposes of something which has led me to do other things or get into other things that i probably wouldn't have done so soon or never have done if 
this happened. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got to see a few other things that I'm like, okay, this is this is I can go down here, blah blah mm-hmm. blah. Um, I'll never try and dwell on things of the past. Always try and look forward. You know, best foot forward. Okay, it's happened. What can I learn from this experience? What have I learned about myself? Mm-hmm. And I think life will test you, it'll test you all the time. You know, I'm fortunate to be have had many things. I've, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm fortunate for certain things, but it hasn't been a straight. It hasn't been straight. Yeah. You have to work. Things happen. You have ups, you have downs, ups and downs. And this is just one of those things, you know. Mm-hmm. And when you try and question everything, you never know the answers. No one's got the answers, you know. But what you can do is put your best foot forward, understand why, like, understand things have happened. What can you take from it? And what can you learn about yourself to mm-hmm. go on? And and that's what I've tried to do. You know, okay, I've been I've I've, I've been in this difficult situation. I couldn't walk. I couldn't bath myself. I couldn't drive can't do all the things I'd, I I could do before, but what am I going to do about it? Mm-hmm. What can I add? You know, the situation is what it is. So if I'm going to sit here and do well on the situation, I'm not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. If I can make best of it and learn to be better, being a bit, how can I say, um, not disabled, but a bit like, you know, you, you're stopped for the moment. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you go, because there's going to be blockers in life you have to knock down walls you've got to do something so you can't let that wall stop you you got to think right how can i get through this how can i get round it can i go through it do i mm-hmm. jump over it and figure it out and that's, and that's and that's all that's all i kind of did and you know like i said i wouldn't have found cycling that many things that i've done now probably wouldn't have done if it wasn't for this sort of thing so the mm-hmm. purpose is like you know things happen but things trigger in your brain for you to step up again and elevate you know mm-hmm powerful word there elevate i'm a big believer that man like i don't i I feel like you always have to try new things to kind of unlock new sides to you to to elevate to take you to that next level because you know i've seen many people and for me it's like when i feel stuck when i'm doing the same thing like a hamster wheel when you're just going on and on and on and on i feel claustrophobic like I, i feel like I'm not in the right, I, I'm not the best version of myself. When I try and, yeah. do, and when I fail, I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm yeah. onto something here because mm-hmm. all right, I tried it, didn't work out. Okay, let me let me tackle it from this angle. All right, it worked that way. Let me try this way. It didn't work that way. Let me, do you know what I mean? So it's like, for me, it's that thrill of learning new things and, and trying to elevate that word, powerful word for me, bro, elevate. Yeah. Like if you look back at probably yourself as well, obviously you played football, for a big part of your life but you've done other things as well like I was speaking to my to my wife the other day and I was thinking from 2010 to 2020 mm. I've done so many different things like I've, I've reinvented myself so many times and I yeah. feel like sometimes people are afraid to do that because of failure yeah. Um, mm. and don't get it twisted like there's times where I'm like you know what I don't think I can do that you know because I don't want to I don't want to seem that I yeah. failed my boys or people around me like well you didn't do that do you know what I mean you you, you felt yeah. it this bit. So, like what you said there using sometimes a negative as a positive yeah. as, as as hard yeah. as it may be I think you know that's something I always try to you know show to youngsters you know yeah. you got to try it man and especially coming from certain areas you know yeah. things are not given to us um, yeah. and, and you have to make the best that what you can do man but speaking about areas like you grew up in Islington what was that like? I know it very well. Um, I went to yeah. um, uh, college in, in, in Angel yeah. Um, yeah. and I played football in Islington and, yeah. you know, yeah. Arsenal fan and, you know, so I grew yeah. up around Hackney and Islington as well myself. Mm-hmm. But what was that like for you? To me, like, I think, I think it's wonderful. Brilliant. Got yeah. I've, got, I've got my education then. You know, I think when I hear, that's what I don't like, um, when the hair players... And narrative, especially when you're, say, a, a, a player of colour, and they use like the narrative is for black uh, for, for black players or people mm. of colour, whatever, is that ah oh, you've come from the, uh, uh, an estate or you've come yeah. from like a, 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 a football or the gang street life. No, well, of course it isn't. Mm. You know, you, you can you can grow up in an estate or live near a estate or live in an inner city. Um, establishment environment doesn't mean you're going to be a gangster or it's mm-hmm. football. They mm-hmm. always push that narrative, like, and then players will always be kind of a bit silly. Yeah, yeah. If football saved me, I would have been on the streets. No, just your your environment builds you to be the person you are. 
mm-hmm. you know the environment has, has has pushed you towards football it's it's pushed you towards wherever you're going to go it's give you that hunger it's give you that desire because you know it's not necessarily given to us we have to go and do it ourselves and work harder ourselves you know you might work harder and study to become a doctor i don't like when they always just sort of like say oh you know yeah you come from this place and mm. it could have been but my 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 where, where i grew up i grew up on a nice road but behind my road there was like an estate mm-hmm. and i used to play football in there i used to hang around with boys but hang around but they weren't naughty boys but then when you're growing up you might knock down ginger stones whatever yeah, yeah. whatever you, whatever you do on the street a bit it wasn't like nothing with nothing crazy but it makes you fend for yourself it makes you street wise it makes you aware and you take those things further into your life when mm. you're foot, when you're a football player you've got to be street wise in, in 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 a way you know when managers are speaking to you you've got to be able to clock things that you've learned from the foundations of being um growing up on the street and you're mm. not sort of like sheltered you're a bit more open you you play out you do stuff so i think there's no disadvantage of 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 um growing up in you can say d- deprived areas or you know it's what you make of it you can mm-hmm. grow up in a great area and if you don't go, if, you, if you're just going to be sloppy you're going to be or, or, or some people that you know um grow up in good areas they might smoke weed and they become a weed head even yeah. though they're from a great family it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't matter it's just down to the individual and i think growing up in like um, inner city place it just, i think it just makes you more hungry mm-hmm. it makes you more gives you a fire that you might not get when you're very sheltered. Mm-hmm. You know, you're able to travel to places because your parents might be working. So you you learn to fend for yourself. You become very more independent very quickly. But I think in sport, it's, it helps. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't, because you have to be independent. You have to hear things from people and you, and you get to sort of like understand and articulate what someone's saying to you quicker than maybe like if your mummy and daddy's taking you. Nothing, don't get it wrong, there's nothing wrong with your parents going with you, taking you. But to come to a point where you have to man up, and yeah. football is a tough. T- t- to be anything, to do something well in anything, it's tough. Mm-hmm. So you've got to have a bit of edge about you. You've got to have you know, your parents always telling you everything, doing everything for you. I think those skills are lost in when you when you're not like maybe out and about. I mean, yeah, if you've yeah. been out and about, I think you get some ingredients that you know. Yeah, it might be rough around edges. But the skill sets you you get from that, I think it, it, it puts you in good stead. So I never see it as like a negative where you kind of grew up from. I think it's just down to how you use that environment and mm-hmm. how you push forward in, in in your future in your future life. But for me, I grew up in um, like around Archway. We, we used to hang around there down Highbury. Um, there was there was guys that I would I would, I would roll around with and you start hold, hanging around with older boys. Yeah. Um. But it made me it made me tough. I was quite like a, a, a tough kid. Um. And it makes you aware of things and then you start doing stuff better that older people are doing. Mm-hmm. Especially when you start playing football, you start you're playing against older boys and it makes you better. You know. Yeah. And yeah. um. And I think the education I got from from my way was 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 brilliant man absolutely brilliant and it wasn't it wasn't like a rough estate so i lived on, on, a, on a nice road and stuff yeah. so but you know i just think i was out and about i was i was very street wise i was savvy and um and independent so when i was started playing orient i started playing at orient when i was 12 years old but i was going to like a trial thing mm-hmm. i got picked up from my school in the end but i was going to like a uh, a trial thing every like a school of excellence but like yeah maybe like a development thing for mm-hmm. a club but i would tr- i in the end i had to start um i was going there to hack me and some days i'll go down on my own yeah to get there mm-hmm. on the bus and at a young age people today wouldn't even wouldn't even dream of doing that sort mm-hmm. of thing but i think it makes you more hungry it makes you more you know um and it gives you something that puts you in good stead for these sports or for top level stuff because you have to be you have to be that sort of sort of minded sort of individual um and and then i think at f- yeah sorry yeah that's so that's so i, I just think nice, growing, cool, man. growing up in, in in certain areas i think when the narrative is pushed in certain ways i'm a bit like mm, well there we go street yeah, yeah. gangster now nah, it's not it gives you 
it could be rough, but it, it makes you be aware of roughness. It makes mm. it could be, you know, there's so many things you can learn from it. I mean, you'll definitely go down that route. Yeah. Because ultimately, you chose to go where you're going. And it's a choice. Chose, it's your choice. And you might have chose to go into college and not go on the streets. Mm. That, it, it is always ball and that. There's so many variables you could have mm. done. So I, always I think... Try- Sorry, bro. Sorry to cut you off. I think it's more so like what's been presented to us in that environment where it's like it's either ball, entertainment, music, or you have to go down the education route. But not everyone's for the education route. Not everyone's for football. Not everyone's for music. Nowadays, there's more awareness of other things that you can do. Obviously, the internet's opened that up and awareness to us. But like speaking for myself, for instance, Mm -hmm. like you know, my, my parents, we come from an immigrant background. My mum and my dad, they're working 24-7. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. They're, they're hardly around yeah. as such because of, obviously, they're trying to provide a better life for us. Yeah. Now, what that comes with is lack of time means mm-hmm. sometimes you don't know what I'm doing. Now, people, yeah. other people are raising me in, 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 in a way where, like, yeah. sometimes it might be... In, in a bad influence sometimes it might be in a good influence yeah. so that's the thing where sometimes where it's about the awareness for me personally and I made bad decisions and and I went down the yeah. you want to call it the wrong road or whatever yeah. and it's definitely helped me grow as a person and giving me those experiences yeah. and I'm lucky enough to still be here to give them um gems if you want to yeah. call it that so yeah me, it's a decision like you said it's definitely a choice because it was my decision to take that route yeah. As much as I thought that, you know, that was the best route for me at that time, yeah. you know that, you know what, this actually isn't the right way for you. But because of this is what's shown to you and the yeah. exterior looks nice, but when you dive into it, there's a whole, yeah. di- a whole different ball game. And this is something that yeah. for me now is, again, going back to why I wanted to start this podcast was to show others there's different ways that you can get into sports, not yeah. just football or yeah. in life in general. There's different yeah. ways. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. but my impression speaking to you is you see life as your cup is half full, not half empty. Is mm. that something that has been, has been installed by your family or is that something that you grew up from your, envi- you, you learned from your environment? I mean, I think, I think it's, again, it's a, it's a, um, a, f- a few things, ingredients mixed into, you know, it could be from family, it could be from um, your area, the friends you grow up with, etc. Mm. So, because ultimately you're a product of your environment, especially yeah. if you're growing up, they could be the foundation. So what you're exposed to regularly or what you do often is what you probably may become. It's, it's, it's simple math. Um, but I've, I've, I've been like, I've, I have, I have, I've had a mentor since I was about 19. Mm-hmm. So this guy, it was next professional, now businessman, really top, top dude. Um, I've even I've been with him since then, and I, we're great friends now and everything. And and I think he's got a lot of things out of me and changed. I've always been this way, thinking I've been positive and on it and driven. He's just enhanced that. Okay. So a lot, lot of stuff now that I do today is definitely uh, attributed to him. Um, but I think again, you know, even when I was a young kid, before even I, I was doing things that people wouldn't do. Like I mean when we started going out, we started going to a place in Muswell Hill, um, they used to have like under 18s, little like rave ups, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm good to that yeah. little club. But I, knew I, I see there's good memories, summer. boy. I see the big smile yeah. there, bro. But like, even then though, I knew I had a game on a Sunday. Okay. My boys will still go out, and some of them playing football as well. But we all grew up, we all play, like young players and stuff. But I'll go home. I mm-hmm. wouldn't go out, you know. And it was just doing different things that I felt was right for me. That makes a difference because mm-hmm. we were all good players. And I think, and I, where I got that from, I don't know. But all I know is my parents. My dad was strict. Mum was like kind of like more relaxed, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dad said you couldn't go out. Mom, please, please. Your mum will be the one who, who allows you. the mums, isn't it? Yeah. So I think I come from a disciplined, um, traditional African family where, you know, there was good morals. Um, you know, that was installed, definitely. Yeah. And I think that's huge. You know, you, I think to come from like, parents would work hard and work, but I definitely think morals, 
um, discipline is a great foundation to start with, you know? Knowing right from wrong, like really knowing right from wrong mm. and knowing the consequences at home if you if you get into trouble. They'll understand, but you know, my dad would be on me if I did things. So it kept me, as much as I would go close to a line, I knew, if, like for instance, if I want to be out longer, I'd boil this down mm. longer, but I'd have to be home at 10. It weren't, it weren't worth the trouble I was getting at yeah, home. Yeah. So I know, I, 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 you yeah. know, where it's, it's 9.59, I've got to start. Yeah nothing sort of thing and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll burn it home so I think that just gave me good grounding I think and ultimately I just knew like um if I did certain stuff the consequences weren't worth it so that just that was installed in me and the people I grew up with and I think ultimately they play a big role you mm-hmm. know and it could be tougher people older people but I think definitely your environment is 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 massive and um um yeah so f- for me in that respect and then when I went to do into football and stuff like that before I met my guy I, w- I was just I was just I was just different man and, mm-hmm. I, and I did I started running as well when I was 13 that's okay. what really got me sport. um and then I was doing athletics and I remember my school teacher used to say running is really good for the mind mm-hmm. and and it's when you just when you just have to like the school um sports day she's like be a good sprinter she said ah oh, this was when I was 10 she's like oh, yeah you should go into running and blah blah so I started doing running first before I went to football and I think that gives you discipline that gives you some endurance you want to win you want to I think that's where it all begun from then mm-hmm. you know and in the end I just wanted to be I never wanted to lose I was competitive mm-hmm. and um and again that might be from growing up with like hanging around older people and stuff and wanting to be big like them but you wasn't and you couldn't be, but you, yeah. you, you no, I want to, want to. So when, when it comes to my own age and doing things around my own age, I want to be the best. I want to be that like, work as hard as I could. And I've, and and it's just those simple traits that have just worked with me throughout. You know, mm. always try and push myself. Always do what's best for me. What's right for me. I'm not okay. like everyone else. So if that works for that person, it works for them. But we're not all the same. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think you ultimately you have to find yourself and know your own warning sign and that's what I think as you get older and like we were saying earlier about like um elevating yourself and 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 understanding yourself it is a your life's journey is about you understanding yourself Mm. to make it a better place for everyone else Mm, you know powerful we're all different you know you can't you can't judge me the way I just someone else or the way you walk in those shoes blah 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 but I think ultimately as I've gone through my career and because and, and you can use things as like football life as because it's tangible, you know, I would do things that then I'll suddenly see the results. And I'd be like, oh, okay, then I'm sort of better than myself. And that's how I try and do things for everything, mm-hmm. you know? And um, when situations happen, like with my knee, I understand, okay, this has happened. What am I going to do now? Blah, 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 blah. And then you're testing yourself again. Then what can't you do? You yeah. know, things, and then and then people look at you and go, oh, you got this, you got that. Mate, you know how hard it was? I could have just quit at that point. Mm-hmm. You know, where I had to go, like, there's teams where I didn't even want to go to certain teams, like, it was like a bit the reluctant, oh, man, you know, I'm going to be up here on my own, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. And then, and then, you, then you have to do seasons where you have to, like, be on it to get a contract there. Mm-hmm. So it's rolled my sleeves up. You know, I left Orient at, in 2007 or 2008. And I signed for Warsaw. And I didn't. I was a bit of a, a, a wussy in terms of like I didn't want to leave. Never wanted to leave London. I always wanted to London. Comfortability in it. It's your home. Like you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, of course. Again, being comfortable. Yeah. Being comfortable. You only live when you step out of that comfort zone. That's mm-hmm. when you're alive. All every other day, you're in that hamster wheel, autopilot. Yeah, yeah. Just going. Just going. You only make strides when you step out and go. You know what? I'm about it. I have mm. to do something. And I remember going to Warsaw now four. This is it, boy. I need to. I want to get back to London. So what am I going to do? And blah 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 blah. Just focus. Did all this like um, I was in the big world. Put mm. my first house up there. Um, um, I had to pay bills. I was like, oh, bro, what's all this like? You, mm-hmm. it, like all different. But then it elevated. It made me better. It made me a better person. I can understand things. I, I always would ask questions. Always say ask questions. You don't understand something, ask questions. And there's nothing like a stupid question because mm-hmm. you're learning something. You know, don't be afraid. Some people are like, oh, I can't ask that. You don't know what a mortgage is. You don't know how to save. You don't know what a saving account mm. asks them. So you mm. know. So when someone asks you next time, you can explain. 
Don't mm-hmm. be because you're not taught on all this stuff in school. You have to learn. You have to learn through mistake yeah. of getting bumped or making an error or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you don't answer questions, you're never gonna know for next time, next time, and better yourself. And um, and again, yeah. So as I was saying, um, I think it just it just developed me. I've, I grew up when I went to Warsaw, and then mm. become a better person and a better player for it. And and that's just been the way it's gone throughout, throughout, throughout. And like I said, it's never the road to your own success is never straightforward, mm-hmm. you know. And and everyone will have bumps and stuff, and it's how you deal with it. But you get to know yourself, and I think it's about knowing who you are, you know, rather oh, than yeah. So there, there's so much layers that you said there that you got my mind ticking so much because it's like. First and foremost, what you said is about understanding yourself first before you can give yourself to others. Now, some people might see that as a selfish way because you're like, oh, well, you're just thinking about yourself. But no, I have to develop myself first. I have to give the attention to myself first, whether that's having a mentor, whether that's reading books, whether that's whatever, meditating, looking after your body, running, like you said, it's good for your mind, like your teacher said. Whether it's doing those things for yourself, taking the time out, that way you can give the best version of yourself. And I believe that truly because, you know, we all battle with certain things in our lives and things like that. And we need to take time. We need to self-care. But some people might see that as, oh, well, you're not spending time with family or whatever certain times. But if I'm not right mentally, I can be there physically, but yeah. I might not be there as a person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just giving my best version. So that was the one thing that you said that stood out to me. The second mm-hmm. thing was obviously the comfortability. Again, true believer of that setting out. You have to go to different places. Um, you went to Warsaw. Now you're coming from London all the way to Warsaw. That must be mad. Like that must be like, where, where am I going? Yeah, when you're young, when you're like 20, something like early 20s, and you've got, you're moving home, you've got your own house and blah, blah, blah. You don't know anything. You're not exactly. Your own. You know what I mean? But by testing yourself and going for it and you, and you, and you, you beat that level, mm. you go up another level. Mm-hmm. You know, what can't you do? You know, and barriers are getting pushed all the time. There's nothing no one can do. Sometimes it just hasn't been done yet. Doesn't mean mm-hmm. it won't get done. Mm-hmm. You know, even when you look at athletics and Usain Bolt done run or the first person run under 10 seconds, you know, oh no one ever do that. Someone does it. Okay. Mm-hmm. They'll never be the youngest player. Someone becomes the youngest player. Yeah, you know, yeah. things will always be done. You know, 100%. so never say never. It can all anything's possible, but mm-hmm. it, it's work, mm-hmm. you know, and it's and it's your own work. Yeah, if, if someone was, oh, but what work? What work? You know how to be good at something you knew how to do the best report or the best revision or to be the best football player you know what you need to do to do that mm-hmm. if you're dieting you know what you need to do if you really want to lose weight mm-hmm. doing it now is so hard yeah you know like i know like if i go to bed um at 10 o'clock or 9 30 i know i'm going to feel amazing the next day i'm going to feel mm-hmm. great if i practice my shooting if i read a book if i watch some youtube clips I know I'm, 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 and I eat certain foods that I should be eating. I'm not going to play well. I'm not mm-hmm. going to play well. That that that's that's the that's the formula. To do it now, it's another ball game. It's another thing. Mm-hmm. But if you know it's going to do you good, and you know it's you you're going to get um Result. results from it. Mm-hmm. Why don't you do? It? But that, why that's the but why though, bro? Why do you think that is? Because we all know, like, once you work on yourself, you understand. Like, even for me. Yeah. I know Mm. once I get into the gym or once I do Mm. uh, some sort of form of fitness, I know my mental state is way better. But it's the getting up part. It's like, I've got to go gym. I've got to push those weights today. It's hard work. But why? Why why do we procrastinate sometimes? Well, that's that. that, Again, that's 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 a question in a question that you don't you don't even like need to answer it. But what you do is little steps and don't even realize you're doing it. You mm. can't answer. Sometimes you can't get the answers every time, but you do little things that cloud the answer. So then you can just sort of like it just happens without you realizing by just doing little, little and often rather than right. I've got to do all this. Mm-hmm. Trick yourself sometimes because I think like ultimately to be the best at something is not being the best at it. It's yeah. being the best at the little steps in the in the, in between. I always say to some people like to be a good football player. 
it's nothing to do with being a good football player. It's not. It's nothing to do with playing football. What do you mean by I that? Again, because many people are good with the ball, and like, mm-hmm. you grow up with people in your area that were sick skills, and you're like, fuck. But then they go and make it. Yeah. But they've got the, all the ability in the world. They're good at football with the ball. Mm. But they're not going to make professional players. And there'd be kids like, he was sick. He was better than you. How did you make it? Because being a good at something is not being good at the end goal. It's being good at all the bits in the middle. Going to bed, eating, not going out when you should be. The preparation before leads to the end result. Powerful. If you expect to pass an exam, but you don't revise, how are you going to pass the exam? Mm. But someone who's not as clever, but they're revising, 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 they'll get a better mark. Mm-hmm. So you have to do all the preparation beforehand to get the end result. People don't want to do the preparation. They just want to turn up because I think their skill alone will help them. It won't. You know, talent will only get you so far. The mm-hmm. graft will get you a career. Mm-hmm. Talent will get you a year. The career is built on the foundations that you've done beforehand. So I always say the little things, the the um, be meticulous. And any top person, when I listen to certain podcasts or people that I admire, they're on it. Mm. They're on it. The little things that you think, that won't make a difference. They don't muck around. Mm-hmm. They're so consistent. So then, are you surprised at the end result? No. These people that have got far less, that don't do half the work that a top person's got mm-hmm. and wonder why they're not at the top. It's all simple math. Do, do the work. You'll get there. It might take long. It might be, it's a marathon. It's never a sport. Sprint. things develop over a long time then you know it takes years to become an overnight success people just want it like that mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i think um you know and i say to you, the youngsters i've uh, um do we have an academy at times it's like you know the little things in between will get you to where you need to get to you've all got ability you've all got something but if you're not if you're eating chips on a friday if you're not going to bed at the right time if you're playing too much fifa etc how do you expect to, to do whatever? How do you expect to be a professional? And then being a professional, they do all those things. You don't have, have to be the best at football. You need to be the best at doing all those things. And to any Steven Gerrard, they graft, they practice, they do these things. And what's the end result? There you go. Any mm-hmm. top person, they, they're, they're, they've done the, they've read the, the notes for the work. They've um, stayed up doing whatever it's taken and they get to where they need to get to. You know, ain't luck. Then we keep Definitely. them meticulous in 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 the in the in the craft, and ultimately, I think the the same applies across the board. Whatever you're gonna do, you know, no stones unturned. And I think people don't want to hear that's what it takes. Yeah. Oh, that's hard work. Oh, I just want to take this drink and I'm and I'm lean. No, you got you got to focus on eating. You got to do more than what goes in your body. Mm-hmm. You'll get there, but it will take time. It's not going to happen tomorrow if you want to maintain it. You want to quickly, then you have your quick shakes and stuff, mm. and won't eat for a month and lose X amount of weight. But then after that month, what you're going to do? You're going to go back to type, and you're going to be back again. But if yeah. you just do it gradually, gradually, and it becomes more of a lifestyle, it becomes more of a habit, mm-hmm. you'll maintain it because you, your foundations are strong. And brick, and brick by brick, brick by brick, there you go, and you get there your you water eventually. Yeah, 100%. Do you know what I'm 100%. saying? Now that's Pat Bro again, it's powerful. And, and I think that again, it, it's, it's, it's a strong message, but we're living in an age where, you know, everyone wants things instantly. Like even now, you can order food, it will come in the next half an hour straight away. You can order your, your clothes, it will come the next day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like we're living in that age where um, things just, people want things instantly. Do you know what I mean? But. Yeah. A formula and a blueprint won't change in terms of success, you know, no. like longevity success anyway. You can have a short term success. You can blow maybe overnight over having a video that's blown up on yeah. social media. But in terms of that longevity, it, it's those lifestyle habits that, that you said that are important. Um, but what I wanted to what I wanted to say quickly, because you said you moved to Warsaw, which was out of mm. London. When yeah. he was younger, I read something that you turned down Tottenham to stay at Leighton Orient. Mm-hmm. What, what was like? Because obviously Leighton Orient, they're not mm-hmm. Tottenham. We know, do you know what I mean? In terms of the, yeah. the league stature and, and the club stature and everything like that. Yeah. What's What made you say, I'm not going there. I'm going to stick it out here. 
Because any young right. man would say, I'm signing to Tottenham, I'm going, because it's a big club. Mm-hmm. Again, man, I, I, I think that, because even, even, even before, like afterwards as well, I had moves that come up for big money, I never did it. Um, Why? Firstly, the, I'll, get, I'll get to that. Firstly, with the Tottenham thing, um, I was about 15 and Tottenham came, and like I said, I was I was on stuff, but I worked. Mm. I was but I was like suddenly again. I was wasn't the best at the time. But I made sure I was the best. Okay, he does this cool. What am I gonna do? And I worked. I'd be in the park practicing. I'd be running. And that's the way I was. So then Tottenham came in, but I was very like what was interesting as well when I was 15. A lot of the my boys that I went Orient with, they all left to go Barnet as okay. well. And I could have kind of gone with them, but I, I stayed. And the Paul Brush and Chris Ramsey um, were like my um, youth development officer and head of head of youth. It was the mm-hmm. other one. They were like really took me under the wing, and you know they um, really like were telling me what to do and how to trade and blah blah. blah. So I had a good connection with them. So I remained at Orient because of that. Not to go to Barnet. Then Tottenham came in, and but I was already in and around the first in and around the youth team players at 15 so when I was, I was at school when I had the school holidays I'd go in and be the youth team etc etc okay and so I was really going up playing a couple of years above my age um sometimes I'll go watch the first team or be in and around the first team I just felt that I'll get when I when I sat down and spoke to the club they were like you'll get in this first team and I, they changed me from a, then I was a midfielder centre mid and right wing and it changed me into a striker because I just went to America um, previously and I've just okay. grew. Honestly, I, I left five, six. I came back nearly six foot. I was, in, I was in Texas for a month. Now. I don't know the food is different over there, isn't it? Oh, What's going on? They must have had, they must have, that's why NBA players are massive. I must have had some, some neck stuff in their pizzas and stuff because <laughs> I came back like really, like I, I really grew. Yeah, yeah. So, so look at you now, what you've got. You, you should, you, we're going to put you up front. And um, um, we're going to put you up front and then we'll um, um, try you up front because I think you'll get in the first team quickly. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, when I was at Tottenham, um, I just felt, would I break into the first team, whatever, it'd be yeah. difficult. Um, and, you know, would I be one of many, yeah, at Tottenham, blah, blah, blah. But I thought I'll get, I'm really playing up above myself. I'll, I'll do it the hard way. I'll work hard. I'll I'll go through the leagues and then get there at a young like at, at a young age and then get in the first team, make a money guard rather than going at fifteen and maybe lost mm. in the lights and stuff. So I remained at Orient and then at seventeen I made my debut and I was did flying. You make, did you make these decisions by yourself, bro? In terms of like because again that's very sensible for you to make that and not get blinded by the sight of you know because there's a possibility you could have broke into the first team so those yeah, thoughts could probably play in your mind as well i could possibly break into the first team and play premier yeah. league like yeah. what, what how did you come to those decisions was it by yourself or yeah to be fair it was because again my parents were like they knew i enjoyed football but they weren't mm. they were here or there they weren't going to say do this do that they were really nice they were lovely with football they weren't pressured on me mm-hmm. um they were like as long as you're getting your education enjoy son you know what i mean yeah but it was the coaches chris ramsey and paul brush were very influential on me then mm-hmm. there was no agents in that sense like tapping up 15 year old boys like yeah. they do now agents are around yeah. like the kid and um so my decision was pretty much the way i thought i thought i know if i keep going where i'm going i'll be in orient's first team before long and you know i'll get scouted and i'll learn to be physically better i'm really plenty a few years above myself mm. and you know i'm improving here and you know maybe because i knew where i was going i knew the area i knew everything maybe you could say slightly comfort zone but i knew that my progression i'll get into orient's first team at 17 i probably wouldn't get into Tottenham's first team at 17 that mm. was my that was my thought process at the time i was wanting to get somewhere as quick as possible I had two good coaches that looked after me very well and you know i signed a, a, a decent contract at 15 yeah. and then sort of got my pro ready like once i turned a certain age so it just made sense i was offered a pro at that point 
at 15 years old and when I turn 17 I'm, I'm a pro blah blah mm. blah so it was it was it was it was just it made sense you know for me at the time um and when you got people that as long as and I listened I was a good kid so when people were there guiding you a bit in, at the club it just made mm. sense to, to to stay I weren't thinking about our oh, Tottenham being a big club maybe if I eventually get in there I'm going to be on loads more money I weren't thinking about that I just thought the natural things. I'm in a place where people like me. They want to develop me. Um, they're going to give me a longer contract. I don't know what I was going to get at top, but maybe I would get like a year and then a youth team contract. Blah blah blah. So it made decision quite quite easily, sort of thing. And then it came true. Seventeen, I made my debut there and everything. I was on fire. It was worth about a million pound um, at eighteen. And I had like two, and, and I had like big money I back played, then as well, you know. Yeah, big money back then. Mm. I mean, I played for England. 17 under 17s and when you're coming from Orient mm -hmm. you know like from League lead two then you know that those things don't happen because you're normally getting picked up they take the boys yeah. from like the big the big club and again that was an experience you know I was with Defoe and, and Leon Knight and a couple of big hitters then I was like oh look, I know you're looking at yeah. and, and they, those guys were a joke they were like they were like ready made players they were like top strikers then you could just see they just did things differently but again it was an experience and um, and I just got some bad injuries between sort of I done too much too soon. My body, mm. my groins just had so many operations. So um, and then, then I had like offers in after that period, but they were up north. Okay. Like um, so Scumfort was one for a decent dough because they were a bit higher then. Um, Huddersfield. Um, yeah, had a few things because they were up north at the time. I do, interesting. He was like, no, and, you didn't want to go. And, and the girlfriend, the girl I was with at the time, again, had this like really lovely girl, like stunning girlfriend at the time. And when you're young, you're just done by beauty a bit. Yeah, I, yeah. Do, I, thought, I thought, if I left, will she come or blah, blah, yeah. blah. The decisions were made like that. Now it'll be different, of course, but because you learn. Yeah. Because things can work out, whatever. But then I just thought, oh, I'll just sign another contract, get this, get that, and I'll remain in my comfort zone effectively mm -hmm. you know what I mean and then eventually when I had to go when I went to Warsaw and then I was I had to step out my comfort zone it yeah. was amazing it was a great experience I learned so much and that's why I always say you live when you step out of that zone you really mm -hmm. learn you really get better um and I think like I said just go answering your question I just think I had good people give me good advice my instinct and my body I always go with how my body feels Okay. My body tells me something, that's what I go with, you know? And my body felt, right, that was it, and that was mm -hmm. it, and that was done, you know? Uh, big and, big up Chris Ramsey as well, man, because I know he's, he's yeah. the pioneer in the, in, the, oh. in the English football, let alone, in, like, grassroots and academy in general. Like, there's been many players that's broken into the first team, and that's because of, you know, the work that him him and others that have done. But I know, personally, like, he does great work in, in, in um, you know, the football industry in England, man. Unbelievable, he is unbelievable. Mm. Like I said, hard work. Hmm. Mm -hmm. like I said it's he's now director, technical, whatever at QPR. Like yeah. he's done England, he's done everything. Mm -hmm. When I was fifteen, he had his books in the car. He mm -hmm. was studying all then, you know, on it, on it. He would drop me home and drop me because we lived like the same. Mm -hmm. We used to go the same way. He looked after me, but he was studying. He was doing mm -hmm. the work then. Mm -hmm. Twenty years later. He's excelled, he's doing, he's done everything. Premier League manager, Chris, everything. Under 21s, you mm -hmm. name it. But the work started 20 years ago, and no mm -hmm. one saw. Mm -hmm. No one saw. And then because he's done the work, he's built the foundation, he sustains that. Mm -hmm. You don't go, you're not hit for 15 minutes. You stay there. Long you just time, get longevity. Better and, better and better. And that's what you want to be. You don't want to, you don't want to be like, when people do diets and stuff, you don't want to be in shape for four months. And then <laughs> yeah. you, six months later, oh, you know, what's, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You want to learn. To Quarantine him, boy. Of, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> you want to learn. Yeah. You sort of like cut things slowly, slowly, slowly. Then you, mm. you become that person. Mm. And everyone's journey in life, it's not what you do today. Having a Mercedes at 25, having a Mercedes at 45, it's still a Mercedes. No one cares when you got it. It's still a, your journey will take you where you need to get to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think too, today we're too like, and, and because we we, it's, it, we we see a lot of things visually now through videos and stuff. So yeah. you, 
don't read, so you just think, oh, so you see that, oh, I want that, I want this, I want that. You'll get there when you develop and you know, learn yourself and your path. Your path will take you where you need to get to. Mm. When you see things so frequent, you think everyone's doing this, everyone's doing that. You don't understand the journey inside and and how long it's taken for people to show up or do stuff, you know? Mm. And and even some rappers I've seen, like, I can't remember who it was, some grime artist, but he was, he was like seven years old doing, I see like an old clip, just mm-hmm. spitting bars at seven. Mm-hmm. Suddenly I think he's like 18, 19, now you're like, fair play. He was He's doing been doing it, it for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ain't mm-hmm. now he just jumped on it, you know? And I just think everyone's destination is different. Yeah. All all roads lead to Rome, but mm-hmm. how you how you get there is, is down to you. A different way. But I, and I think as long as you always say, like, you know, if you didn't know how to get to Manchester, it's hard. Yeah. But if you plan your route and go, right, it's, it's the M1, M6, I take this road, this road, suddenly it becomes obtainable. You can start seeing the destination. Everyone kind of wants something or wants to be something, but I haven't worked out the steps in between. Mm-hmm. If you if you sit down and focus on the steps in between and you're willing to do the steps in between, you'll get to that destination. But saying it, saying it, and then just saying it and doing nothing about it won't happen. And, I, and then with the cycling, I've never cycled. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm doing 100 that, yeah. steps. Sorry, I was trying to... No, no, I was going to say, no, no, go on, bro. I was going to touch on that. Like, definitely and, talk about the cycling. And I had done it, but I thought to get to this level, I have to do all this. I have to do that. I have to go out. I have to go out in the winter when it was cold mm. and, and raining. And, oh, but th- you have to put in the miles and have to learn how to do hills. And all of a sudden, bang, 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 bang. I'm, a bit of a, I'm, I'm, I'm doing like 107 miles in a day. You know what I mean? That's and, not a and joke. Friday, 70 miles an hour average on a hundred mm. on a hundred mile trip. And that's only because I just with, with some good people I've learned ask questions. Okay, how do I get better? What do I need to do? Do mm. this, do this, do this. You see it. And if you can see it, you can do it. See yeah. it and do it. You know? And, and like I said, don't be afraid to ask people questions. Don't be afraid to look silly or whatever, because there's nothing like a dumb question because you mm-hmm. you've learned something, you've gained knowledge. Um, and there's nothing you can't do, but it's just the work. If you're gonna yeah. put in the work, you can do it. Hundred yeah. percent, man. That's powerful, bro. That's pa- and and in terms of the sack, you you said that you're doing um for 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 charity as well. Do you want to speak yeah. a little bit about that as well? So basically, um, in obviously one firstly, I got into cycling because of my probably my injury because mm-hmm. the way like you know I enjoyed football for twenty years and then we then we got into lockdown and I thought to myself oh, let me just enjoy life in it because I've been on a diet focusing on what I ate and blah 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 mm. but the chocolates came out <laughs> I'm there at home like, oh, no, it's, so, it's so good yeah. I'm seeing things on my body that I've never seen before I was like yeah. nah! but I thought cool <laughs> yeah. I had, I, let me have a year out and stuff so then um, and I couldn't run at the time so I thought how can I do some fitness so mm. then again I bought this, I was out and about in Crouch End and um, I passed this bike store and I was like, ah, oh, what, what, what are you getting bikes for sale? And I had mm. this dead too rusty bike. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was like an old school racer. I was like, you know what, I'll just take that. You know, how, how much goes? Uh, and he goes, oh, give me a price. And I'm looking at it thinking, I don't know about bikes. In my mm. head, I thought, 100 pounds. But I'll go in at 50. Oh, 50 pounds. Mm. Oh, come on. 60, but yeah, I went and he said he said 60 pounds. So I took the bike away, but yeah. it was dead, all rusty. Yeah, but yeah. then I then I went on YouTube, Pinterest, and um just done it up, learned how to just respray it, sanded Shit. it all okay. down, um, pull it and if I I'll send you a picture later. Yeah, so dope. What it looked like to what it was to what it became was it was amazing. I learned just from online. That's dope, and then, man. And I started, so you added so more that, skills to your arsenal already. You know you know what I'm saying? And then that was in July, in the first lockdown sort of thing. So I started to ride slowly on that, mm-hmm. just to lose weight and get back into shape. And then when I started taking it a bit seriously, again, the competitiveness, I was riding down Holloway Road, and some guys just whizzed past me. <laughs> and, yeah. and, I, and I burned up to him, like, yeah. and I got to him, I was like, <gasps> and you get past me, 
it's about the bike, isn't it? You need to yeah. get like a road bike. You need to get like, you know, this and that. And he started explaining a few things to me. I was like, oh, okay. Went to the bike shop. So I need to have a bike in it. Blah, mm. blah, blah. So I picked up this bike in around, I think it was December. And again, I started, then I started getting serious. I, got, I downloaded these apps to monitor what you're doing yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Then my cycling journey kind of began. And then I met up with a group of guys that like-minded individuals and it was mm-hmm. good just to get out. Everyone's in that COVID situation indoors. So it was nice to just to get out and ride with people. So then we, we would go out on a Sunday and a Wednesday um, every week in the cold months and stuff. And then we just improved. And because of a lot of guys were like saying, oh, they've, everyone's in different situations. Yeah, yeah. And this was a, a good way for them to clear their head. Mm-hmm. Um, we've improved and we've got better and we've been going longer rides, longer rides. And we said, all right, then why don't we try this London to Brighton? Because it's like a popular okay. route that everyone mm-hmm. kind of does and when you're getting into it. So we'll go London to Brighton and back. And why don't we do it for charity? And because we, we enjoyed um, cycling together and it was a good to, for headspace, um, we said we'd do the charity Mind because it's about mental health and stuff like that. So we've raised, I think, I think we're up to 5K, maybe just we over did. that now. Um, we ride May the 30th um, and yeah and, and you know it's, it's just been again talk to me two years ago a year ago will I be wearing lycra and all that no chance be like, ah. no we don't do that is it you know I mean? like, we don't do that can't do that is he no 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 <laughs> but again you know, never say never, and you don't know mm. what you're capable of. Hundred you know? percent. And and again, it was, a, it was a nice test for me. Like, what can't you do in life? Mm. You know, mm. put in a bit of effort, put a bit of graft in. What can't you do? It's there for you, and, mm. that, and that's all. That's all there. It's nothing to do with my legs. It's just what's in my mind, mm. and mm. and your mind, the space between your ears, the most important thing for any, for Ooh. anything that, that anything you wanna you wanna do and achieve. And when I say achieve, it doesn't, it doesn't mean something high. Mm-hmm. It could be anything, you know, just be like going out and walking to the park, getting fresh air. I know people mm-hmm. that wake up at five o'clock and go for great walks and it makes them feel, makes them feel amazing. You have to get up. You mm-hmm. have to go to bed a bit earlier, figure out your formula. Okay, mm-hmm. if I'm going to get up at five, I'll start going to bed at nine. So I feel better for it. Mm-hmm. I feel energized. I eat food. I, I make sure I get gloves. I warm up. So it's going to be cold at that time. Then you can do it. Then mm-hmm. you can sustain it. But if you just go to bed at 11, 12 o'clock, about to wake up at five, and you try and just walk, and then you ain't got the right jacket or you're cold doing it, it's not going to last long. Mm-hmm. Figure it out. Ask people to help you figure it out. You can go do it. And so whatever you want to do, it's in front of you. It's in front of you. Wow. You just have to, powerful, you know man. what I mean? So, no, powerful, um, bro. Yeah, so that's how we came to do the cycling thing. And then I'm sure we'll try and do more in the future. Who knows? But no, we'll I, I, might have, I might have to join you guys as well, you know, no, soon. No, I'm not going to lie to you. So I'm, I'm there. And think, and, and can people still donate to the to the, to the the cause? Yeah, there's, yeah. Um, there's a link on my Instagram bio, just given. So okay, we can. And you can, you can help support the cause. We'll put it in the description so, as well below that people can, yeah. you know donate their, 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 their whatever thanks, wherever they can man. So nah, no worries man but bro before we wrap things up here yeah, looking back at your career mm. I know you said you're a man of things happen for a purpose not a reason mm. 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 would you say there's anything that you could have said not not that you regret but mm. maybe I should have done that or maybe I should have not do you know what I mean maybe I should have not done that or should have done this like is there anything in your career looking back now 600 games seasoned professional looked after yourself with all the injuries and everything like that with all the uh challenges that you faced mm. is there anything that you would change from your career no the only thing because what it's made me today is what is a prime example of all the things i've learned from the past mm-hmm. so if i would have made different decisions earlier I don't think I'd be the person I am today and I like the person I've become. But the only thing, having the head I have now, but obviously you experience enable you to have these thoughts and stuff. 
I would have had this head then. But what I, I, what I would say is that when possibly certain clubs came in for me when I was a young kid and they were just north, because mm-hmm. I've never experienced going up north before and all that and being like London based with, with a girlfriend at the time and all this stuff, I thought, oh, let me just stay local. I might probably gone further now and done it, you know? But would would my path, would I have played 700 games and whatever, like, if I made that decision, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So my development, I developed when I had to develop and that's why I became the person I became because of those decisions. Um, but looking back, I, I don't, I, I never want to be a pussy, never, never want to be a wimp. I always want to, you know, have to, Darts in, in that circle of fire. I'm about it, you know. So, um, so no, I wouldn't say I regret anything. But with the head I have now, I would have just took the opportunity and gone, yeah, fuck it, let's do it, you know. And that's mm-hmm. why I'm a bit more like now, sort of thing, a bit more on it. I don't care if I'm not the best at something. I'll be, I'll, I'll get better. I'll learn to be the best, sure. best or you know what I mean. And that's my attitude now, sort of thing. So, and um, going, going to the future now, what? What is Jabo doing? What is your plans? You don't have to share everything, but like in terms of future vision, like you said, you know, you, you're yeah. going to try things. What's what's the plans? Well, I think like um, definitely it'd be in behind f- football. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just finished like a, a course in governance, leadership and board membership. Mm-hmm. So I plan to get on the PFA board committee at some point to help sort of like you know some change especially for like younger players and you know just to, for people to understand that football is brilliant it's great mm. but you need to don't like give every doesn't give everything because you have to but you have a lot of time to do other things yeah to learn and 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 for your life after football mm. so i like to sort of get that point across um, by getting behind the scenes at a higher level where those things can change. Um, I'd also, so that, that course has enabled me to get on the, the PFA the PFA board to work towards that. Um, yeah. I do recruit, I do recruitment um, at, at Brentford, so I'm behind the scenes there. Um, then I've set up my own company um, that we, um, like a recruitment company basically as well. Um, and I want to grow that to be the best, the best um, hub for players that have been released or want to showcase their talents. We want to be the best in London and we will work towards it. We've set up our own company. Um, we've obviously, like, you, you do you know your business accounts and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's all like, all of a sudden you're doing a madness. But again, we knew nothing about any of that. Mm-hmm. We done it. We started last year. Um, we called Finishing Touch Football. So we basically get a lot of players that have sort of been released from top clubs or good good um, players that have been scattered from non-league. Mm-hmm. We place you all together. We we help sort of like prep you to perform on stage in front of like scouts, managers and from various teams across the country and Europe. And last season we started it, we, we ran with it. We started, we started watching a lot of players basically is how it started. Started watching a lot of players about um, whilst I was doing a bit of work at Brentford. And... Um, I've seen that there's some great players on the doorsteps of clubs that, like, say, around sort of East London. And you're like, how do you not know, like, it's a brilliant player that could play in the yeah. league? Yeah. Then I see, and then, or I see players that kind of been released from a good club and I'm like, oh, he was decent. And then, like, languishing a bit. So we said, why don't we just then, um, COVID happened, we're like, why don't we just um, invite some of these players we've noted down to a training session? Mm-hmm make a team out of them and, sh- and then and then um, with our scouting network and our football network we invite like coaches and, and managers down and directors of football to watch them and, and then put on a game and play the match and, and then um, see if we can get any anyone scouted or any moves for them so we just went with it invited them invited, reached out to our agents our, our, our friends and stuff and then the first session we had like 60 players turn up oh wow and then um, we had to start whittle it down and sort of take the best out of it, formed a little team. And then last season, we had 11 players turn pro. 23 Ooh, that's went that's a pro. big ratio, right, bro? 23 went in on trial. Um, and then with like 
and then what was great about it because there was a couple of kids that were just good guys like really top nice boys mm -hmm. and he got signed by us two of them got signed by Salford okay and they were so like oh thank you so much for mm -hmm. you guys we've never done this never that and the reward you get for giving back and the advice you get you know because sometimes there's good players that you need to a little tweak you mm -hmm. know do this do that simplify be efficient whatever it is and they just get better Sometimes I think, what are you being coached at times? Didn't no one tell you this or that? So there's another way we help to develop them. And one guy signed for Brentford. Okay. And he made his debut for in the FA Cup in January this season. Oh, sick. And we were suddenly, we've built it now. We were going around the country playing like all teams around um, um, England. And we were just winging it, just going with it. And now, this year now, we, we, we've done it. We started again now because of like the break. Mm -hmm. um we've got a website being built business account now we've, we've registered the company um we've got even more players had okay. like we had, to, we had to spread it over two days now um we easily got over 100 players on the books and again there's something from nothing that we've just mm -hmm. grafted 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 and, and and we'll see where we go with it sort of thing so um it's amazing yeah man. so yeah so so i'll be developing that and obviously I'm, i do i'm a recruitment at brentford I'll probably eventually aim to be like a director of football or something okay. like that eventually. So working towards that and a business on the side, you know, and just keep keep just trying to give back, man, and help. You know? Powerful, man. We'll definitely yeah. put a link as well for the academy down below for people to yeah. check out okay. and everything like that. And I know for a fact, just speaking to you, you'll get you'll get to those positions that you desire and that you that you aspire to be just because of your mindset and what you know just our conversation definitely without a doubt i've got no no doubts about it man but um bro quick one before we shoot off i want to do a quick fire yes. round question with you yeah i know no we said 45 minutes but <laughs> <laughs> quick one yeah um first one best player you've played with Oof. Well, well I bet we've got Jason Punching. Jason Punching was really good. It was All a right. madness. It was a madness. Yeah. It was big, good. Up, big up Punching. He's doing his thing in Cyprus now as well, isn't it? He's out there enjoying yeah, yeah. the Cyprus weather and that. So, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, next one. Favorite coach? Uh, John Gorman. Uh, yeah, John, John Gorman. I learned a lot from him. He was a funny guy. Good man. Yeah. Wicked. Friend. Wicked. Describe yourself in three words. Um, cool. Happy. And pragmatic. <laughs> cool. I'll take that. I'll take that. Right. Um, best lesson you've learned in the last six months. Oh, that's a good, interesting one. Um, best lesson I've learned. Always, um, just, 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 just never. Anything's possible, man. Just, just be happy. Any, any, anything's possible when you're happy. You know what I mean? Um, you know, put your best foot forward. Um, yeah, put your best foot forward. Always be happy, and when you give a good, when you give out good energy, things happen. Man. Powerful. Well. Mm -hmm. We'll end it on that note there, man. Positivity right there, people. Without a doubt, like, I definitely gained something out of this. And whoever's listening, I'm sure you've you've gained a lot in terms of, you know, understanding a little bit about the football industry and what it takes as well to, to get to that level and be able to play over 600, 700 games. Um, yeah, man, there was so much. There was so much. I have to digest. I have to watch it over again and digest the conversations because there was a lot of things. There was a lot of powerful messages that you dropped as well, bro. Um, in terms of the impact that you're having already, look at the, you know, players, not just in terms of them signing onto a professional club, but even some players that maybe not have, not wasn't, wasn't able to sign for a professional yeah. club. I'm sure you've given them a pathway to understand this is the route that you should take. You might not go it the first time, but we'll go again. We'll try this way, as yeah. we said. If this doesn't work, we'll go another way. So, you know, the work that you're doing is incredible. Like I said, we'll put all that below um, the charity and everything like that. We'll definitely have to do another one because you're a man of many layers. Like you've you've got tons of knowledge as well, even in terms of behind the scenes of football and finances as a footballer, which is a big thing right now. Um, 
as of players. But yeah, we'll definitely do a part two and we'll do one in person, definitely. Um, guys, if you've enjoyed it, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe with others. Um, and we'll catch you soon. Brilliant. Fantastic, man.